Today, I have for you seven orienteering tips that each one of you can use to get better quickly. And what inspired me to make this video is the training camp the national, of the national team uh, in Poland that we just had last four days. And I did quite a lot of different analysis with people and quite a lot of them are actually easily fixable as long as you stick to some basic rules of let's say advanced orienteering so basic rules advanced orienteering maybe it doesn't fit very well but it does make sense so stick with me until the end and let's see if i can give you something that will actually be helpful if this is your first time to the channel this is uh, into the forest i go an orienteering channel where we're talking about running with the map and compass and uh, we all love this sport if you want to learn more about it stick until the end of this video or just browse through all the other videos on the channel and hopefully you will find something useful over there and now back to the tips all right so number one make the list of the most important things for each race now what do i mean by saying that i mean that um, this list can contain two different things because there are usually two different lists that I advocate to make. The first list is about all the things that are important to you during the race. When you're already running with the map, you're orienteering. So these are the things that uh, are connected with the technique you're going to be using because there are many different techniques that the orienteer can use and you have to take the right, the, the, the right ones for the terrain that is ahead of you, right? So of course there will be different things on the list when there's a forest race compared to the sprint race. And even in different sprint or different forest races, you will also uh, have to um, modify the list depending on the type of the terrain that will be there. So for example, in the um, terrain with lots of greenery, you will be using a different kind of orienteering than in the, the semi-open areas like we had in the Portugal um, few weeks ago right so um, this is what i have in mind make a list of things that will that you can read before the start that will help you focus on the most important elements of your orienteering technique that will be crucial during the day during the race that is right ahead of you the second list that i actually didn't uh, have in mind right, while writing this tip but you can also make a list of things that are going to be happening consecutively uh, from the morning until the race day. This is, I think, I feel that this is more useful for these days where uh, the level of stress is high. So these are usually, you know, the, the, the very important races like European champs, champs, world champs, um, national champs, where you feel like you really want to perform here. This is your time to shine. This is what you've been working for and waiting for. Uh, so the level of stress will be um, higher than usual and then it's more probable that you will actually forget about some things but if you have a list and everything is on the list then it might save your life sometimes you might for example not forget your shoes to bring to the start which happened <sighs> yeah the second tip is check your surrounding before you start the race. So you're going to the boxes area, starting boxes area, you know, the start area in general. And one of the first things you will have to do when the race starts, so you leave the last box, you hold the map or you go and grab the map, and then you start orienteering. What is the first thing everyone has to do? You have to locate the triangle on the map. So you have to know where the start is on the map so that you can uh, start planning the route to the first control. And that can take several seconds and sometimes even more than 10 seconds, depending on um, how lucky you are, because there is some element of luck, you know, where if you drop your gaze at the right place on the map, you might be able to find uh, the, control, the, the triangle very quickly. Uh, more often than not, what really happens is that you find one of the controls, let's say it's number seven, and then you say, okay, which way does it go backwards? This way, no, number eight. So this way, yeah, number six. And then you follow the controls back to the start, right? So this takes some time, especially if the first control uh, is quite close. It might get a little bit stressful that you didn't manage to find the start quickly. And then you either had to stop or you're running in a little bit of a wrong direction because you didn't get the chance to plan your route choice yet. But what you can do is before the start, before you enter the boxes, when you're doing the warm up, warm up, you can take a look around and figure out what is the surrounding 
of this start area. Maybe there are some very distinguish, distinguishable, distinguished? I'm not sure. Maybe there are some very visible elements that you can use to quickly find those elements also on the map. An asphalt road, a very big field, maybe some buildings, um, maybe something else that will be very visible and you will be e e e quickly, uh, you will be able to find, find it quickly on the map. Maybe you are able to figure out which part of the map the start is going to be, right? So sometimes, for example, you are crossing uh, an asphalt road and there was nothing in a, um, in a bulletin that said that you, are, you will be crossing the asphalt road during the race. Therefore, the whole map is probably behind that asphalt road, right? So if the start is near the asphalt road and you're looking at the compass, the compass is showing you that the asphalt is at the south of the map, then obviously the start will probably be somewhere toward the south of the map as well. So things like this uh, will help you locate the triangle as quickly as possible so that first of all you save some precious seconds, you never know when those seconds might get you a better place at the finish. It happened to probably most of us that we lost a place by, by a second, two, maybe three. Um, and um, on top of this, you will also be able to avoid these stressful situations where you're trying to find the triangle and it takes, you feel it, that it takes longer than it should have and some level of stress might appear. So that's, th that's this. A third tip, it's really, really simple but not so easy to use. So it, it, basically it says, never run without a plan. Never run without a plan. Never run without a plan. So when you have a leg in front of you, make a plan. What do you want to see during this leg? Which navigation techniques are you going to use? Are you going to be using mostly compass? Are you going to be using contours? What else are you going to be looking at, right? Which elements do you have to find? Which elements are nice to find, but if you don't find them, it's not the end of the world, and so on, right? So don't run without the plan, because if you're running without the plan, you're raising the risk of finishing this lag with a success, and uh, you don't want to raise the risk, really, while doing orienting. You, you want to minimize the risk, and anytime you're raising the risk, you're um, basically saying that I do accept to have um, um, an element of luck in my race. You don't want to use luck, you want to use your skills. So because skills are something that you can rely on. Luck is not relied on because you might have it, you might not have it. And, uh, and that's, that's basically it. But I want to also mention that for those of you that are afraid that, you know, sometimes to formulate a plan, you have to waste an additional time, because, well, let's say that the race is intense. The controls are difficult. There is very little time to read ahead. And you're reaching a control, and for the next leg you don't have the plan, but you know, you have the strength, so you punch the control, and you keep running, and you keep looking at the map, and then you're still thinking, what is, uh, how do I want to tackle this control? How do I want to attack it? And then you run 50 meters, maybe in not a perfect direction, and then it's already maybe too late to change it, and so on and so on, right? So there is this train of thoughts that are happening, um, and the reason for all of this is um, basically that you don't stop to formulate the plan when you have to. I'm not saying that you always should because of course you can make plans while running. Preferably before you leave the control, you should have a plan for the next one. Uh, but what I would advocate is first of all, don't think about this as a wasted time. I mean stopping, right? Don't think about it as a wasted time. Think about it as an investment. You, you're investing the time so that you have, you can have a better uh, race time at the finish, right? It's a shorter one, of course. Um, also, realize that even top runners, top athletes, they do stop sometimes to make a plan. And they don't run if they don't know where they are supposed to run. And it happens to all the top athletes I've seen. If you, if you're watching, for example, um, the uh, TV commentary from the national, sorry, not national, but European champs, world champs, you will see that occasionally, it, it doesn't happen very often, but occasionally even top runners before the long leg, they will start, stop, read the map, make sure that they find um, several route choices, pick the best one, and then when they, sh when they are sure what to do, they keep running. And I want to tell you also a very short story regarding that. So during this year's GA, well, actually last year's JWOC, right? So last year's JWOC in Portugal, 
um, one of the Polish runners um, had an opportunity during the long distance to run uh, for a while with Noel Brown, who of course crushed the competition over there. And he told me that when they got to the longest leg, they actually had to flip the map over there. Noel stopped at the control and he spent, well, according to uh, the athlete, around 30 seconds figuring out which route choice to take. But then uh, he made a decision, he took the route choice, he re realized it perfectly, and he had st still had the best split on that route choice, right? So it's an investment, it's not a wasted time. Uh, people that didn't take the best route choice, they definitely wasted time, even if they didn't stop at the control and didn't lose those precious 30 seconds. Uh, so um, what I'm trying to say is don't be afraid to invest this time because it will pay you back. The fourth one I have for you is check your compass when you're using or crossing the roads. So I know I've been mentioning already at least once in one of the videos, I've also been talking about it in the, the Orienteering Academy, but I, it, it is very important. It is very important because it helps you get um, the confidence that you always want to have during the race while navigating. But more important than that even, it helps you avoid very big mistakes. So what happens again, and of course the more advanced you are with orienteering, the less it happens, but usually the less advanced runners, they sometimes have this problem that they are crossing the path and they actually think that they are, or are using the path, and they actually think that they are on another path, not the one that they are actually on, right? And if you check the compass, you know, these paths very, very often go in different directions, right? So one might be here, second one, one might be here. And instead of running on this one, you might be running on this one because you were crossing and you hit not this one, but this one, right? The, the wrong path. And um, then if you don't check it immediately, you might fall into an error that is taking you 90 degrees in the wrong direction. You might fall into an error that is uh, making you go and search for the control in the area where the control has no right to be. And these, these kind of errors, especially in the terrain that is quite similar to one another, you know, that the one place in the terrain is similar to another, you, you, will, you will feel that more or less it more or less fits and will, it will be hard to quickly figure out what went wrong. But if you check the compass, you might you know, cross the road, you might run along the road for a few meters, but if you check the compass quickly and quickly realize that the direction is off, it's wrong, then you will waste just 10 seconds, maybe 15 seconds, right? Maybe, maybe just five seconds. Uh, but um, you will you will be able to quickly correct the mistake and you know go where you're supposed to go rather than the place where the control is uh, will never be uh, be found. So it's a small thing you can do, but it can save you from really big mistakes. I'm not saying they happen very often because they they don't. But even during the uh, short training camp that we had the last four days, there were at least two or three mistakes like that. And I think that if you would sum it up, it's probably around 20 minutes altogether of mistakes that were made just because of this one simple error. The fifth one I have today is check the direction in which you're leaving the control. So I'm saying this here because this is one of the errors that is happening quite often. When I'm doing the analysis with people, we very often come to the conclusion that you didn't, or the runner didn't check the direction while leaving the control. Therefore, he or she went 50, 100, 150 meters in the wrong, wrong direction, and then they didn't hit the elements that they were, they were hoping to find. Of course, this causes them to slow down, this causes them to stop, because they have to now figure out what's going on, and they have to later on correct the direction, which sometimes also doesn't go perfectly, because of course it's easier to keep going in a straight line rather than go a little bit to the right and then correct it to the left and come back to the straight line. Therefore, it's just a problem. And all it takes to avoid this is to look at the compass when you're leaving the control and make sure the direction is right. Of course, you can connect the compass with the map as well uh, to make sure that everything is, is correct. Um, a very useful tip 
very simple one and it saves a lot of time so hopefully it will save some time for you as well. Tip number six is before the start it usually makes sense to tape your shoelaces so when you're tying your shoes you you can either tie them perfectly so that there is no chance for them to get untied during the race or you can tie them as you normally do but then tape them also with a tape so that um, again the, the shoelaces and the knot is protected from all the bushes and you know sharp sticks that you will be running through which very often pull on your shoelaces and more often than not after several kilometers your shoelaces will untie and you will have to stop and take some time to tie your shoes. Um, I'm one of the people that do this very rarely but that's not because I don't think it's useful that's actually because I um, I am not that competitive when it comes to finding for, uh, fighting for the top places and I'm kind of accepting that if I have to spend 20 minutes, seconds, 20 seconds on tying my shoes, it's actually fine. But if I do have a race where I do not accept this kind of loss of time, then I will do everything in my power to make sure that my shoelaces do not untie themselves accidentally. Uh, so if you want to be sure that you're not wasting time uh, because of your shoelaces then just tape them and you will be fine. But here's another tip that, uh, uh, which is kind of connected with this one. If it happens that your shoelaces do untie and you have to stop to fix them then what I'm doing during this time is that I'm always putting the map right next to my foot and I'm tying my shoe but I'm also reading the map at the same time. So it's it kind of a little bit helps me um, make up for the lost time because I'm more sure what is my plan, where I am, what I'm going to do and what, what are the next steps that are going to happen in my orienteering race. That's what I do. And the seventh one. I've been wondering about this one for a while and I, I, I'm not sure if it fits here really because they were supposed to be simple tips that can help you get better faster <sighs> but this one just just I would be, I don't know, I would be disappointed if it didn't make the list because I kind of feel that even though it doesn't sound like a tip, it is so important for everyone to use. So what I want to say over here is use your compass at all times. Always, always, always keep checking, keep looking, keep using the compass during the race. Um, I mean forest races really because during the sprint race very very often you wouldn't even use the compass once during the race and that's fine but during forest races I feel that so many mistakes are made just because you didn't check the compass at the right time or you maybe did check the compass but you did it too quickly and not accurately enough that I feel that, you know, I have to just say, keep using the compass at all times. For, for those of you that are a little bit older, you, you might remember this uh, cartoon that was about the soccer player Tsubasa. Uh, and he had, his greatest friend was his ball, football. The, the ball for playing football. So, so I, I kind of feel like our greatest friend each orienteer should be the compass and you should be looking at the compass as often as possible and yeah I'll, I'll just I just end it here just use the compass as often as possible and I know the title said seven tips but I actually have a bonus one for you um, to, to be fair I had like 20 on the list and I just picked seven but this eighth one I, I felt like I, I just want to mention it and I will because it's connected with a situation that really stuck to my mind and uh, this situation is connecting to losing your SI card. So I think that it's really quite important so that you get your SI card secured additionally. So each SI card of course has this gum that goes along, uh, around your finger uh, or you put your finger through it but then you can also buy these lines that you can put around your wrist 
that are kind of helping you protect you from losing the SI card. If it gets ripped off your finger, then it will hopefully dangle on that line that is around your wrist. Now these lines, they are usually made of uh, some kind of uh, rubber line, so that they are extensive. Um, I, I'm not sure how durable, how, how strong they are, I, I rather feel that they are not very strong and I've been using one of those lines for the past, I don't know, one and a half, maybe two years and recently it broke because it, it just, you know, it, it was used too much already and it broke even without me pulling on it very hard. Uh, what my wife is doing is she actually has a line that is not extens extendable uh, and it's uh, a lot harder to break really. So you might want to consider doing this or if you maybe remember the talk that we had on this channel with Noel Brown. If you don't know who Noel Brown is, uh, then I've already mentioned him before, so you do know. Uh, then um, he said that after this unfortunate race uh, during the jaywalk, when he lost his SA card and probably lost the gold medal because of it, he decided that for the most important competitions that he's going to be running, He's actually going to tape the SI card to his finger as an additional protection. So I guess this is a solution that you can use as well. One thing uh, is sure. Do something to protect yourself from losing the SI card. And you know many of you will think, well, it probably doesn't matter too much. When was the last time I lost my SI card? It never happened to me. The problem is that there is always this first time. And if this first time happens during the competition that you really want to perform at, that's a problem. And I've met with people that had a similar situation as Noel. They lost their SI cards even at the moment when during the race they were winning the race. And these were European champs as well on top of that. So, you know, it's probably not that big of an effort to just do something to protect yourself from these kind of situations. All right, and that is all. This is where I want to end this video. Hopefully this was helpful and hopefully at least one of the tips is something that you want to incorporate into your orienteering regime, into your orienteering training, uh, orienteering habits. And uh, if you like this video, then give it a like. If you didn't like it, then give it a dislike. If you want to mention something regarding the tips or maybe you want to add another tip of your own, let's see if you can um, we generate more than my list um, from from being from preparing to this video. Then give it, um, then put it into the comments under the video, and I'll be happy to read through those. Maybe you will inspire me to actually add um, or record another video with those uh, those tips in the future, and we will create another set on top of the seven or actually eight that we had in this one. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. That's a good way of supporting us. And if you want to support us even more, then remember, remember that we also have a Patreon that you can sign up for. The link to the Patreon is in the description of this video. I'm super grateful for any support <coughs> you are able to provide to me and Mati that is helping me um, make the videos for this channel. And with that, I love you all and see you in the next video.